Hey, welcome back team. In this video, we're going to learn how to deserialize a JSON object and store it into a C sharp variable. Just a moment ago, I created this file customer.json. Let's take a look at this file. As you can see, we have several records that make up this JSON file. And right now there are seven fields that comprise each record. You can see that the customer ID, the customer name, strings, and then we have number of employees as an integer, and pays on time as a boolean. So we're going to write a program to dereference that. So right click on references, manage NuGets. And we're going to be searching for Newtonsoft JSON. Install it. Once it's installed, we can write programs that use this library. Pretty cool, right? Press pause now to make sure you get these using statements. So right click on the project, add a class, and let's name this class customer.cs. Let's add the public scope and the serialized attribute to this class. And now we just need to look at all the fields and apply them to our class object. You can add one field or all the fields to this C class objects and the data types must be agreeable. As you can see in the side by side, customer ID equals customer ID. Customer name equals customer name. The, the spelling must be identical. As you can see here, I declared number of employees as an integer, which is nullable. Let's look at the JSON file. Notice number of employees in the first rec answer is 10, 20 in the second one, but it's missing in the third. But I still want to be able to process this field. So we declared number of employees as a nullable data entry point. In the next one, date last order is also using an optional. You can see here it's used in the first record, the second record, and the third it is missing. It is a nullable data type. And you can see the last field pays on time is a nullable data type of type bool. It is in the first record, the second record, and is missing in the third. It is a nullable data type. We need to process that. So the goal here is to take each field from the JSON file and add it to your class object. Remember, the spelling has to be the same, but you can only pick and choose the fields that you want and make sure your data types are appropriate, nullable if necessary. Make sure your c -sharp close has the Newton's off using statements. And we're going to be using some file I.O., so make sure you use system.io. Let's add the method example1 simple class object. Here you can see that I have assigned fn file name to the string c slash slash YouTube. When you just look at that, it doesn't look correct because when I copy it out of File Explorer, Notice that there's only one slash between the folder names. Unfortunately, when we assign it to a string name, the slash is actually an escape character and it has a lot of meanings. So what we have to do is if we want a slash in our screen, we need to add another slash to say, hey, he wants a slash. Now there's another way to do that and it's using the verbatim identifier. That's the at symbol. And notice here, I just applied my string after that, and now I can apply that to string name. Just the code looks cleaner than using all those slashes. Now, let's test to make sure that file exists before we start doing a bunch of code. Notice file.exist, that came from that using above, and file name came from line 27. Press pause here because this is the gold. Here you can see that I'm going to take that file name, I'm going to read all that text, 
And then that deserialized object is going to take that JSON code and sign it to my C class object. It's going to look for that spelling, customer ID, and then it's going to sign it to my class object in C sharp. So for each of these ver uh, field names, it's going to go one by one and assign it to the object. That's all it does. That is what's considered serialization and deserialization. After the file has been read, deserialized, and assigned to customers, we need to return that record. But it is possible that we didn't find that file. There was an error. The path was wrong. Imagine if I put three on customer. When it got on line 30, file exists, it would be false. So it would not do that deserialization. So we want to return null. As you can see on line 20, I'm calling the method on line now 24, and I'm going to get the results of that function. Now, the thing is, I have two options. I can either return a class object or I can return null. Let's program it appropriately. If customers not equal null, that means I got data, I can then loop over that and show the output in the output window. That's through system diagnostics, which is pretty cool. You can click that button to clear the output, and then we'll be able to run the program and just show the output as we need. Let's rebuild the solution and see if we have blue star and we do everything is working fine. Okay, let's press the F10 button to step through this program. F11 to step into the method and we're going to see if that file exists. If it exists, we're going to go in there, read the contents of that file and then deserialize that and assign it to the customer variable. And then we're going to return that object to the calling to main. But as you can see here, we know how to parse records now. We knew that our data structure customer was created correctly. We put data types as nullable when they were missing throughout our class object, our JSON file. Now you can see that customers is not null. It has three records. That's how many records were in the JSON file. Now we can just loop over that. Notice the output going to your output window. And that's how you read a file, deserialize it, and consume it. And this is the takeaway. This is all you really need to know about this video. Just pass in the file name, give me a good object, deserialize it, and return it. And that's all I have.